I'm Ed Francis, I'm the head teacher at Fort Royal Special School. We're a, a large primary community special school in the heart of Worcester. Uh, and we, we uh, serve children with a range of disabilities um, and are probably our most, our most common cohort are those with autism uh, and other complex needs. The idea for Time to be Seen as a project really came out of a shared interest between C&T and Fort Royal School to try and experiment with finding new ways of engaging the most severely disabled students here at the school with their wider civic society going on outside the walls here. We knew that our children were really motivated by technology. Sometimes they have difficulty accessing the curriculum. There are many students here at Fort Royal that have ideas, creative impulses and things to say that are beyond what their physical bodies or traditional media are capable of expressing. And we really wanted to find a way of using the creative arts and technology to not only give those students a voice, but to make sure that the rest of Worcester was hearing that voice. Well, CNT has always um, placed a premium on working with children with special educational needs. Uh, we've been working in this particular area for over three decades now. But in recent years, our work with digital technology has opened up lots of new possibilities in terms of the way that you work with young people with disabilities and to give them an opportunity to make choices and work within the sensory curriculum is really, really important. One of our topics was James and the Giant Peach and one of the things that we were able to use with your support was the VR headsets. Um, so the children were able to experience what it was like to be in New York, so it was um, quite an immersive experience. Within seconds, the young people, the children just got exactly what was happening all around them. Taking ownership of their own le learning and their own creativity, it was, uh, it was really exciting to see them in their elements, it just happening almost magically in the room. The language and the communication that we were hearing from the children, not just from questions from us, but also the children talking to each other about what they could see and you know, how it was amazing. And um, seeing the children smiling and being happy and um, really being engaged to that, to that learning and bringing that book alive it was wonderful for them. One of the most memorable projects that we've done with um, our, our lottery funding is the Hydro School. It enables the children to have choices about what kind of adventure, what kind of activity they'd like to do in the pool. It's really beneficial for the children. It's something that they really enjoy. One of the things I found most exciting about this project have been the moments where we find, sometimes quite unexpectedly, a sweet spot where using technology, creatively experimenting with a new way of using it, has really opened up opportunities for students to become facilitators themselves, rather than just the kind of passive recipients of work being done to them. As a school, we're very isolated. Access to the community has well, it's been very difficult the last two years, but, we, but even before that, even before the pandemic, it was difficult. During the pandemic and the first lockdown, a lot of our parents were struggling to get their children to access the learning, particularly those that were sort of more technology-led. It's about being able to use technology in a way that's beneficial for the children, that's developing their independence. What's been most exciting about this project is seeing the way uh, these children with special educational needs communicate in very different kinds of ways. Another benefit of the project has been the upskilling of our school staff. We've done a lot of training and seem to have come in and offered a lot of staff training opportunities. Time to be Seen has really been a three year long experiment in what are the potential benefits of fusing c and expertise in participatory arts practice and digital technology being used creatively with all of the pedagogical expertise and community engagement knowledge that Fort Royal School and the Friends of Fort Royal have. And seeing how the staff were really inspired by the possibilities that we could use here, that partnership as well has been really important and really beneficial. Well, I think the, the real success will be how we can turn that into a longer term um, opportunity for the school through the training and the software and the hardware that you're leaving behind and how we can utilise that. I believe in the legacy of this project. I think we really have just scratched the surface of what's possible here. I think this project has the opportunity to, to be a real beacon for, for change in terms of work with children with special educational needs because what's really exciting about what we've learned as part of this project is that um, other young people um, 
across Worcester, across the UK and internationally could benefit from the way these technologies work. And I think we're just at the start of that process really of starting to open up what those possibilities might be and really looking forward to seeing where that takes us and Fort Royal in the future.